Getting married is such a beautiful experience. It's such a beautiful thing. I remember when I was preparing for my wedding, I was so excited. And the day of the wedding and all the things, it's such a beautiful thing. But also preparing for marriage is beautiful as well. And it can be beautiful. But I feel like a lot of times we don't really prepare. We just think about the wedding day or I'm going to have my husband, I'm going to have my wife, and we don't actually spend time preparing. But today we're going to talk about it. Welcome back to another episode of the You, Me, and Jesus podcast. Today, we are going to talk about how to prepare for marriage. Now, I will give you a disclaimer. I'm not married. I'm divorced. And I know you may be saying like, how can you tell people how to prepare for marriage when first of all, you ain't married. Second of all, you divorce. Well, it's because it's my podcast and I can do that. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about it. No, seriously. So being divorced or being single does not mean that I don't have wisdom and knowledge on how to prepare for marriage because since I've been divorced over eight, nine years, can't remember how many years it is, I have been preparing to remarry the entire time. Not necessarily looking for somebody or expecting for God to bring somebody, but I have just been preparing by doing a lot of different things in order to be able to prepare. And so I want to just talk to you through like what it is that I feel like you should do to prepare for marriage. So one of the first things to understand is that you've got, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you like a visual example. So you've got two people, right? You've got you and you've got the person that you're going to marry. Now you could be single. And if you're single, then this still applies to you. But if you're dating and you're looking forward to marriage, then you know, what have you. So you've got you and you've got the person that you want to are going to marry. Outside of the couple of you guys, there is you two. There is you that was born from your mom, born from your dad, raised in whatever household you were raised in, dated whomever you've dated, married, divorced, or whatever you did before this person comes along here. So there is you. There's all of your life circumstances. There's all of your uh, church upbringing, like what you believe about God, what you believe about the Bible, Jesus, Holy Spirit, what you believe about marriage, all the things that you have been taught and that are inside of your brain about marriage. And so then this person comes along and you're like, okay, here is how I was raised. Here's all of my experiences, my hopes, my dreams, and here's all my expectations. But then also we got this person and this person was born from their mom and their dad raised in whatever household they were raised in, believe what they believe, all the things as well as their expectations. And so then what happens is that you are pink and you're born this way or whatever, like you know, all your experiences. And and then this person is black. If you're listening on the podcast, I'm holding up a pink pencil and a, and a black pencil, not saying pink is for girl, whatever. You know what I mean? So I'm just telling you for, for visualizations. So you guys have gotten who you are. And now what you're doing is you've met and you're dating and you're like, oh my God, I love you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. But a lot of times we don't really realize that one of the things we need to do is we've got to unpack how each person was raised, how each person thinks about marriage. Like, like what were the experiences that you had with your mom and dad, your aunts, your uncles, your cousins, you've had in your dating relationships, or if you were married and divorced, the experiences in your marriage. And then what were you taught about roles in marriage, right? What were you taught about the opposite gender? What were you taught about kids and working and home experiences? Who cooks, who cleans? What were you taught about all of that? And what are your expectations, right? Because you both have them. And if you haven't had like these deep level conversations and actually set the expectations of the relationship, of the marriage, of roles and all that type of stuff, then you're kind of, you know, setting yourself up for failure. And so one of the things that you need to do before you go down that aisle, before you set that wedding date is you've got to sit down and go like, okay, like we say we want to be married, but what does marriage mean to you. And now this is some of the non-sexy conversations, the non-sexy parts about being with someone and dating someone and getting engaged and, and all that type of stuff. You know, when I think about this, that obviously I'm not in the situation right now because I'm not dating, you know, someone to marry. And so I'm like, this is hypothetically what I would want to do, especially because I've been married and divorced. And I'm like, hindsight is 2020. There's some things I, I would just, just do, do differently. differently. And one of the things that I feel like you should do is, is like set up this 
this time where you've got, you guys have got these questions and you've talked about it some, right? And you guys have both created like this list of questions that you want to have answered by the other about, you know, expectations of roles and gender roles and what happens in the home and expectations of marriage. And just, y'all just have these questions that you want to ask, right? And here's what I would do. This is what I desire to do, but we'll see what happens when that time comes. But I just think it's a good idea. Both of you all, like y'all come together and then you all combine the questions, right? So y'all not answering them right then and there, but like he's made a list, she's made a list and y'all made this list of questions. And then together y'all combine them into like, okay, so you had 40 questions. I had 30 questions, but we all, we both had some similar questions. So combining them, we have about 45 questions. So now you've combined them. What I feel like you should do is is you guys should go off on your own and he should write out his answers and she should write out her answers. And then you choose a time where you've got a couple of hours and you're like, okay, so let's talk about this. And so then she may ask him, well, how were you raised? What, what were you, what was like, how, what was the household like when, when you were raised? Was your mom there? Was your dad there? Were both of them there? What was it like? Who worked? Who cleaned? Who did the grocery shopping? Like who, who washed the clothes, who folded the laundry? Like all of these particular questions, you know, what were you taught about having children? What were you taught about how to discipline children? Just like, like, first of all, just what were they, what were they raised in? What was it like? And then asking the questions of, so, so here's how you were raised. What do you want to keep doing according to how you were raised? And what is it that you want to do differently according to how you were raised? As it pertains to gender roles, what do you feel like it's a woman's responsibility to do inside the home? And what do you feel like it's the man's responsibility to do? What are your thoughts on uh, one person being at home and one working or both working? What are your expectations if both people are working? Like who's going to come home and cook? Who's going to grocery shop? And then like, what are your expectations about children? What are your expectations on how you discipline children? How were you disciplined as a kid? What did you love and not love? And so it's like, these are not sexy conversations, questions or what have you, but like it really, really helps you understand your partner. And when I think about my previous marriage, we didn't do this, right? Like we, we didn't do this. I didn't really know that this is something that people do or that we should do. But now that I've like gone through so much therapy, I mean, I do therapy all the time. I love therapy. And the more that I ask myself hard questions on a regular basis, I've already said to myself, like, I know all of this about me. And if I'm going to combine this life with with somebody, I've got to know what is going over there with him. What is he thinking? What is he feeling like? What is he expecting? Because I don't know what that is before I choose to say, yes, we can spend our lives together because it could be that he says, I want my wife to be at home cooking and cleaning and that's it. And I'm like, I don't mind to cook and clean, but I also run a business. Like, what is that? Does that mean that I can't run my business and that you just, what does that mean? I met a couple who he said that he wanted his wife to always have her hair a certain way, her body a certain way, and everything needed to stay the same. And I said to myself, that sounds good today, but what happens if that can't happen or whatever? So it's like having those conversations to understand where it is that he's thinking, you know, not to mention I'm 41 years old. And when I meet someone, I'll have to say, what is your desire for children? Like, do you, do you want to have children? Do you have to have children? Because if your answer is you have to have children, children. Um, I may not be your girl. I, I may be able to have kids. I'm not sure. Cause I'm 41 and I don't know, you know, hopefully that could happen, but I need to make sure that he's not like his life wouldn't be ruined if my body doesn't produce a child. Right. Like, how do you feel about adoption? Like what, what is, you see what I'm saying? You know, not to mention like if we choose to have kids, what are your thoughts on discipline? How were you raised? Like we were beat when we were growing up, we were beat. And because I've been through so much therapy, I realized that's actually trauma. And I'm like, okay, that's bad. That's not a good way to, to discipline a child. But I don't know if that, if he's gone through therapy or what he believes about being beat as a kid, or if he's someone who's willing to have these hard conversations with a child, like at a child's level, you know, time out, you know, if he's willing to do those things. And these are the things that I am strongly encouraging you to do. Again, it's not sexy. It's not fun. And not everybody's going to encourage you to do these really hard things. But the truth is, is that a lot of people are not 
doing these hard things and then they are getting married and then like everything just goes kaboom and people are like what in the world this is not what I signed up for I this is this and this and a lot of times it's because there was no communication like I remember in our marriage like I worked from home I had my business and my husband had this unspoken expectation that I was always going to be the one doing the laundry folding everything putting everything away doing the grocery shopping cooking and running my business and cleaning you know all of this stuff and I was like you know, you know what I'm saying? Not to mention, like, if you're someone and you have been abstaining from sex, let's just say if you're a virgin, like when I met my ex-husband, I was like inexperienced. There was just so much that I did not know. And he was frustrated at times. And I was like, I didn't, you know, and the Holy Spirit had to go to him on his own and say, hey, uh, you should be grateful that she's inexperienced because you're her first teacher. And he had to come to me and he had to apologize, which is very painful and all the things. I'm just like, I you know, whatever. But anyway, it's just like a tangent. It's just having these really, really hard conversations because just think about it. When you have really hard conversations with a person you're going to spend the rest of your life with and you learn how to navigate things, like you learn what their expectations are. You learn like, oh, like, you expect that we're going to engage in uh, in sexual seven days a week. Okay. All right. That's great. So that means that we have to make sure that our, our lives are not like to the point of stress where we like, we're just exhausted when we get home. Because if one person has the expectation of seven and one has the expectation of one, then it's like, you know what I mean? I know it sounds kind of like dramatic, but I'm just saying, I know a couple who is six days a week, sometimes seven, which is awesome. Right. But they have set up their lives in a way to make sure that like from the moment that they wake up, they're constantly just loving on each other. It could just be through a text message. It could be just through your coffee or whatever. And they're just always just kind of setting up life for what it is they want at the end of the night. They also set up their expectations on sleep. Like the time that they normally, you know, get it on is at night, but he normally goes to bed earlier than she does. So they have, have it set up that, like, okay, right around this time, our lives start coming down. We have dinner. You two, we take a shower. We go get it on. We watch a little bit of TV. He's going to go to bed a little bit earlier than she is. And then she's going to bed, but they have this routine. So that way, like what they both want is being met. She wants to watch her reality TV. He wants to get it on six, seven days a week. Great. They're both happy with it, you know, but it's just, they're just setting it up. So I just wanted to share that that's one of the things that you could be doing to prepare yourself for marriage is because remember, it's just y'all two. I don't care who your mama, daddy, cousin, grandma is. It's just y'all two. When y'all in the house, y'all got bills y'all got responsibilities stuff hits the fan it's just y'all and if y'all learn how to communicate before you get married set expectations and all those different things then when, when y'all decide to get married like y'all are on the same page like y'all are literally on the same page no matter what's going on with everybody else and that is how you have a healthy marriage you know and listen there's a lot of things that go on in marriage but that is one way to have a healthy marriage so i hope that you found this episode valuable if you did be sure to let me know I would love to know if you give a review or you can write in the comments here on YouTube. I would absolutely love it. And I cannot wait to introduce you guys to my man once I get one. So if you love the You, Me, and Jesus podcast, make sure you go to all the podcast players so you can listen to the podcast. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play.